performance, USA, the greatest entertainers in America, is requested by you, the fighting men of the United States Armed Forces throughout the world. Command performance presented this week and every week till it's over, over there. All right, gang, take a half-hour pass and pop into the USA where the home fires are burning for you guys who are keeping that fire burning under the axis. As usual, the joint is packed with musicians and loaded with stars who've dropped in to answer those great letters you send to command performance, care of Special Service, Los Angeles, USA. And uh, speaking of your favorite stars, here's your number one gal from the honeysuckle belt, Tennessee songbird of the AEF, and your mistress of ceremonies, Dinah Shore. Telling all you guys that Schickel group of the paper hanger started out as that paste pot from Austria, but he'll wind up as that crack pot from Berlin. <laughs> Hello again, fellas, and thanks for the letters. Second Louis, Bob Hickman, and Kathy at APO 833 say when command performance comes on, the gang moves in like the Brooklyn Dodgers giving the Bostons the bums rush. <laughs> well, <laughs> but let's go to work. For Sarge McSwain and the mob at 614, the Bay State Boys at 485 from Cap Caporale and the Hell's Bells in the Middle East, for Wheelahan and Hulahan on that battleship in the Pacific, here's a thrill that thousands of you have been waiting for. The whole orchestra of Freddie Martin, Jack Fina at the Steinway, and that famous Martin number, the Piano Concerto. <laughs>
Freddie Martin. Freddie will be back on the beam with another great number, but right here by command of the doggies at 827, the signal tower personnel on Midway Island, for little Virginia Irving over there in Liverpool, for a gang of water tenders in the Atlantic, for Rocky and Ed and the North African hotshots, the engineers in Algeria, for Jack Stewart and the RAF in southern Rhodesia, and for Lieutenant A.S. Blodgett, Jr., Command Performance proudly presents a famous daughter of one of our first families of the American stage, Cornelia Otis Skinner. The scene, an American living room. Cornelia Otis Skinner, as mother, has been cornered by her son, aged 12, who's having homework trouble. And overwhelmed by the injustice of having been brought into a world of mathematics, Junior has placed the whole discouraging matter squarely in Mother's lap. What is it, Junior? An arithmetic problem? All right, I'd love to. Here, come sit on the arm of Mother's chair. Mother just loves to help her little boy. Now then, which is it? Number nine? Let's see. Three boys, A, B, and C, were playing at marbles when they were marked by the first three. How many marbles did each boy have? Well, darling, that's very simple. You see, all you have to do... Yes, all you have to do... <laughs> all right. Now, we'll read this through carefully, and you listen. <laughs> Three boys, A, B, and C, were... Junior, turn that way a minute. I wish you could see behind your ears. <laughs> Do you play games, dear, in which you put your ears to the ground? <laughs> now then, three boys, A, B, and C, were playing at marbles. They were playing at marbles. When A remarked that if B gave him one of his marbles, B would have twice as many as A then had. Well, that was nice. <laughs> B remarked that if C gave him three of his marbles, C would have twice as many as B had. You see, that's the same thing A said. <laughs> no, it, it isn't. Well, it's practically the same thing. A then remarked that if B gave him seven of his marbles, the number that A would have would lack three of being half as many as C would have left. <laughs> How many marbles did each boy have? <clears throat> well, darling, what you do is you add... I mean, multiply. I don't know. Maybe we'd better divide. Three boys, A, B, and C, were playing at marbles. But, Junior, don't do that. Can't you remember to use your handkerchief? <laughs> Go get Mother's button basket over there. That's it. Now, these buttons are marbles. Because I say so. <laughs> I'm A. Here, give me your hand. You're B, and here's C over here. Now, you give me one marble. Any will do, Junior. Now, you've got twice as many as I have. I don't know how many I have, but you've got twice as many. <laughs> I don't know how many marbles there are. There are X marbles. X is the marble... Yeah. Junior, don't argue with me. I remember perfectly. It's all coming back to me. We spent years and years in school letting X equal something. <laughs> well, it's an expression, let X. Like let go. <laughs> I can't help it if Miss Meebles has you do it a different way. Mine is the old-fashioned method, and I know it's right. Now then, C gives you three marbles, and you give me one. I'm A. Did you take three from C? Well, take three from C. <laughs> Junior, do you have to make that noise? That queer, bubbling noise. <laughs> well, please stop. It's very unattractive. And, Junior, if you don't stop kicking this table, I am going to do this wrong on purpose to punish you. <laughs> Pay attention. A then remarked that if C gave him seven of his marbles, the number that A would have would lack three of being half as many as C would have left of all the fool things for a boy to remark when he's playing marbles. <laughs> Junior, I don't see why you don't try to use a little more gumption and work this out for yourself. Of course I can do it, but I think you ought to. Oh, wait a minute. 
Wait a minute. I think I can do it. I see you gave me one. He gave me three. Multiply that to subtract. Uh, uh, Fifteen. Uh, uh, subtract equals zero. There's the answer to the problem. The answer is zero. I don't know what the question was, but the answer is zero. <laughs> Dearie, the question was, how many marbles did each boy have? Oh. Junior, you tell Miss Meebles for me that that's a perfectly stupid arithmetic problem and one that would fit you in no way for future life. I can't do this with you in the room. You're going up to bed. Go on, hurry, dear. Penny Packer, 1525. I'll be up. I'll be up when I've got a better answer. Hello, is this the racket club? I want to speak to Mr. Marshall. This is Mrs. Marshall. Hello, George. Hello, darling. George, wait a minute. Junior, go in your room and shut the door. <laughs> George, Junior just came to me with an arithmetic problem, and I can't do it. Now, I'll read it to you quickly. It, it's terrible. Three boys, A, B, and C, were playing at marbles when A remarked that if B gave him one of his marbles, B would have twice as many as A then had. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. B remarked that if C gave him three of his marbles, C would have twice as many as B had. Well, wait till you hear what A said. <laughs> then remarked that if C gave him seven of his marbles, the number that A would have would lack three of being half as many as C would have left. The idea being to find out how many marbles each boy had, if you can. No, he gave him one. Who gave who what? <laughs> oh, he, he gave him seven. Oh, I see. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Yeah, I see. Mm-hmm. Divide by I see. And C had 19. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes, I understood perfectly. All right, darling. Goodbye. Oh, George, how many did A have? I see. All right. Goodbye, dear. Now then, Junior. Mother's worked this all out for you. Thank you, Cornelia Otis Skinner. Well, gang, for a long time we've been feeding vitamin pills to a group of old-timers to get them in shape to play some of that wonderful music known as Dixieland. Back in 1900, Grandma and Grandpappy down in New Orleans were cutting the rug on this kind of a music. By uh, 1917, they called it jazz and were really sweating it out. Anyway, we've got eight of the nation's great exponents of Dixieland, all with the rheumatism. You asked for this, so you got nobody to blame but yourself. Fellas, a touch of American swing when it wore diapers and those royal garden blues.
fun. Thanks a lot. Well, sir, when somebody ties into a tune on command performance, it's often two or three weeks before he learns that there should have been an encore. Take Alan Jones, for instance. Alan popped in recently to pour out the donkey serenade. And now there's bushels of new mail saying that while he was at it, why the Dickens didn't he also sing Sweet Mystery of Life? So especially for you fellas on Tulagi, Dutch Harbor, New Caledonia, and the Falklands, the Red Devil Gang at 960, the crowd we knew at Treasure Island, the Tripoli Twerps, and for Sergeant Carpenter and the men at 851, it's another command performance for Alan Jones. I found thee Oh, I know at last The secret of it all Oh, the long Seeking, striving Waiting, yearning The burning of hopes The joy and vital tears That fall Oh Love and love alone the world is seeking. And it is love and love alone that can repay. It is the answer, it is the end, and all of living. For it is love alone that. Another one of those command performance dillies. Oh, well, I guess we can... Here's the letter. Dear Command, some guys get to hear the sound of the San Francisco foghorns. And one time you had a billy goat on the show. But you know what would be real music to me and every other farm kid? The sound of milking a cow. <laughs> I mean those two seams of milk when they hit the bottom of that old tin pail. Man, that's real music. <laughs> Signed, Private Elmer Thompson, Australia. Okay, Alma, here it is. Get any on you? <laughs> Wonder how that sound was sad of me. It'll be the first time Freddie Martin ever followed a cow. <laughs> This boy, Freddie, has a way of holding his hand no matter what kind of competition. According to over quite classics, quite like our boy, Freddie. And I've listened to his band enough to say yes, Lord, to that. Here's that other number you asked for, the second Hungarian Rhapsody played by Freddie Martin and his orchestra. Oh, 
Thanks, Freddie Martin, and your orchestra. And now for Little Bill and the ABC News with my thanks to APO 855 for that great honor you've done me, for all the engineers on the Pan American Highway in Central America, and for each and every one of you, guys all over the world who write those terrific letters, here's the tune that's right up there on the top rung of the ladder, that old black magic. Magic called love 
Tennessee buried his face in a huge watermelon, and a half hour later, with his little ears dripping and the melon seeds slipping down his cheeks, he looked up out of his big mournful eyes and said, that's all there is, there ain't no more. <laughs> this is Dinah saying so long, right when you can, and all our love from the USA. This is Ken Carpenter knocking off till next week with a notation that command performance is produced for you men in the armed forces of the United Nations by the Special Service Division of the War Department of the United States of America. (laughs) 